We'll talk about the convention a little bit. And Liz says, uh, first song, I want to see you. And I've been reading a book, um, I highly recommend it to everybody. It's called The Prophetic Warrior by Emma Stark. It's from the Glasgow Prophecy Centre, where they train prophets and leaders. But anyway, uh, she was saying that she's always encouraged her, her children who were born again to walk in the Spirit. And she always asked to ask her children, she used to say, is Jesus in the room? Where is Jesus in the room? She was encouraging her children to seek God for us themselves. And do you know, after a while, the children began to see Jesus. Oh, wow. One experience she was saying about her child, he said, and she said, is Jesus in the room? Yes, he's here, and he's in his pyjamas. Because mm. <laughs> he's come to say goodnight to me. Uh. He's there, because he cares. There's little children talking. But we need to become more aware of the spiritual realm around us. And this is what, uh, you know, she was talking about, really. But we can also ask Jesus, and there's a crowd of people, where are you, Jesus? Are you here? And we can go and stand by Jesus, so that we're acting and working and performing what Jesus wants us to do. So, you know, um, I thought that was encouraging when I, I read the book. I've read the book about three times this last year. And every time I read the book, I find there's, there's always something more in it. And as Bethel Community Church, we are a prophetic church. We are a spiritual warfare church. And we're a church that believes strongly in healing and miracles. Mm. You know, we begin in a new year. I had a message uh, back in no, October, November, November, and end of November, beginning of January, uh, December, which... It was just a phrase, and I, oh, I didn't like it. I didn't like this message at all. I didn't like this message, this, just this one sentence. Today I'm going to read a few different scriptures to you, but this sentence has hung over with me all the time. If I was going to give a heading for the message today, is counting the cost of following Jesus. We need to count the cost. We need to sacrifice everything to follow in Jesus, especially this year. God wants to bring new beginnings, but he's asking us, the question that God kept asking me, and asking us as a church, can he trust us? Can God trust you? Can he trust you this year? It's a challenge. Because we all make, well not everybody, I don't make New Year's resolutions, I only make one that I'm going to read the Bible through again every year. That's all I try to do. Because I know that's gone up. It doesn't matter. You know, that we find that um, we make these promises, we don't keep them. They've forgotten after day one sometimes. Hmm. You know, last year I felt God was telling us to put God first in everything. Even though we've had a tough year. I tell you what. I'm sorry to tell you, 2021 is going to be tougher hmm. than 20. But we have a confidence and a hope in Christ Jesus Amen. that we won't walk through this on our own. If we continue to put Christ first in everything, then he will walk with us and he will strengthen us. I mean, 20 was a, a year of sifting. God was looking for to see who those who were going to stay faithful to him during that time. Through a time of trial, but there's greater trials coming upon us, but there's great blessing coming too. Yeah. But God is worried about it, well, concerned. But can He trust each and each in individual, in each and every one of you individually, if He can trust us this year? Can God trust you with what He's given you already? God has given us so many different things, but can He trust us? And we need to consider in our hearts, are we willing to let God use us this year? Are we willing to step up? I'm running ahead. <laughs> Let's go into the message that I have. Are we trustworthy enough to do this for him? We have prayed for years about revival coming to Bethel. And we've got to trust God. God will bring the revival, but if we are right with him, the word that Wayne gave this morning, 
is exactly what I'm going to preach on, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, because God is searching our hearts. He wants to know if we were in, are we willing? There's so many things he's got to ask us. Because in the past, we've been half-hearted about doing things. We haven't put all our strength and all our life into doing exactly what God's told us to do. Sometimes we've been uh, doing things we think is what God wants us to do. And I like the way that is I put it earlier. We need to be praying about this baby bank and these other things. Is this what God wants us to do this year? If it is, God will bless it. But God wants us to really consider and ask him, is this what you want me to do this year? Is this what you're challenging me to do this year? And that we walk correctly and we do it. God wants a change in our attitudes and our behaviour this year. We've pussyfooted about too much in the past, softly, softly, trying to be nicey, nicey. But we can't be doing that anymore. We have to make our stand as believers in Jesus Christ. There's an onslaught, there's an attack coming upon the church <coughs> and in our nations. There's going to be a tap time this year. But God wants to challenge us. Are we going to stand strong? Is he, are we going to be swayed by every wind of doctrine or change or whatever we hear on the news? Or are we going to stay focused on him this year? Are we willing to do the things God wants us to do this year to live godly, holy lives? Because God does want to bring the revival we're praying about. But he has to prepare our hearts for it first. Mm. Are we truly committed to God? Are we truly seeking him for everything we need? And standing up. I know I am, and I know some of us are, but are we all? We, got, we can only ask God for ourselves. We can ask God to point his torch at us, shine a light into our lives, and look out those dark parts, the things that we do that we know we shouldn't be doing and being different to the world. God is looking for believers who understand, who really want to live true, holy lives. We've sung holy, holy, holy is the Lord, but the Lord wants us to be holy too. Be ye holy as I am holy. Be separate as I am, you know, as I want you to be. Are we willing to change? Matthew 16, verse 23 to 25. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are not setting your mind on things of God, but on things of man. And the next verse. Then Jesus says to his disciples, If anyone wishes to follow me, as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. We can have it up, but we can do it with Christ in us. And take up his cross, Express a willingness to endure whatever may come. And follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living. So we need to be up for our example to be that of Christ, of true holiness, and, you know, and godly living. So form into my, <laughs> form into my example in living. And if need be, suffering. Now, people are always taught for many years that when you become a Christian, life is going to be hunky-dory. Well, that's a pack of lies. It's not true. Jesus said, if you come after me, you will suffer for me. We will suffer for Christ. And God asks us to do that, willingly. But he doesn't ask us to do it by ourselves. He stands with us. He walks through us. He holds our hand. Uh, when Jesus, when I get to conforming to my example in living, we need to start changing the way we live and the way we act, the way we speak, the way we talk, to be more like Jesus this year. If need be, suffering, or perhaps even dying, 
We have to stand up and be counted now. We can't pretend that we are one minute we're a Christian, we're in, in church, the next minute we're out there doing the same things as everybody else, living a sinful life, and then suddenly coming back to church and saying, oh, I'm okay now today, I've done my bit for this week. I'm okay now. No, God is wanting you to be a light. I see that sign there, be the light. God wants us to change. He wants to transform us. He wants us to walk daily the walk that he has for us. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it. So don't worry about your life anyway, because your life is in Christ. He's bought you, he's, he's, he's taken you. So if you do lose your life because of your faith in Jesus Christ, don't worry about it. You know where we're going. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake will find it. That is life, life with me for all eternity. That scripture begins with Peter arguing with Christ because Jesus was telling Peter what was about to happen. And sometimes we argue with God and with Jesus ourselves because he's trying to tell us something and we want to turn it to make it the way we, we think it should be. Peter thought he could take up arms and fight. Mm. That's not what Jesus wanted him to do. And he told him, get behind me. You're not doing what I, my father said. You're not thinking what God has given me to do, told you to do, or me to do. Because God had a plan, didn't he? Jesus was going to die on the cross, but Peter was going to fight against that. And uh, he said, no, you need to know what I want you to do and what God's plan is, not what you think God's plan is. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. See, we often got our own preconceived ideas of what God wants us to do, and often it's our ideas, not God's ideas, <coughs> you know? So, like we had said this morning, we need to pray the direction for our church and what we should be doing, things that are going to work out, Things that a God's got his hand on, moving in his direction, not in the way we want to move. There's lots of things we would like to do, but we need to ask God, what is it you want me to do? Proverbs 16 and verse 3. <coughs> Commit your works to the Lord, submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed. If you respond to his will and his guidance. See, God wants us to put everything before him. That's what we heard this morning. Let's do it. Put everything now in the next decision we need to make as a church. I mean, we believe as a pastoral team that God wants to use more prophetic ministry, deliverance ministry and healing ministry this year. You know, let's commit that to God. But the thing is, it's not just the pastors that can do these things. These signs shall follow them that believe, we've been taught. And we may need to be asking God what gifts he's given us and start using those gifts. Amen. Are we willing to die this year? I mean, maybe not physically, but spiritually die to our own selfish ambitions and our own desires. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. We should be walking in that newness of life. The old ways of thinking, the old ways of acting and behaving, we've got to let go of. Do we dare to be different this year? Are we different to those around us? Or do they see us as Sunday Christians and not Christians? <coughs> Do we dare to be different? We have to dare to, we've got to be different. We've got to be showing that light. We've got to be living that example and walking holy lives. Because like I said in the beginning, if we're not, God can't trust us. God won't trust us with the responsibility of this revival that's coming. If we are not faithful and walking holy lives before him. Paul went through many hardships and difficulties 
didn't he? You know, he was persecuted for his faith. Many times he was stoned and left for dead, and he, one time he had to be lowered out of a city by a basket. Are we prepared to go through things like that to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour? Where we then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he says, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. I'm reading from the King James now, sorry. I've skipped a little bit, Liz, so don't worry. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We must give no offence in anything that the ministry be not blamed, that we must be walking by example, so that people don't point fingers at us. They say this, but they're acting that way. They're doing this, they say this, but they do the opposite to what they say they're doing. We must be blameless before the world too. We must see us as actually really being committed Christians. But in all things, approve ourselves as ministers of God. You're all called as ministers of God. You're all called to be saints, you know? Not the saints that they say, you know, the Catholic Church says about, and they call somebody a saint if they die for their faith. No, we are called as saints. We are the saints of Christ. We are God's ministers in this world. In much patience and afflictions, in necessities, in distress, in stripes, imprisonments. This is what we're talking about for Paula to go through. In two months, in labour, in watchings, and in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and faith, by the word of truth, by the power of God. This is how we're going to work. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armour of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honour and dishonour. Because we've been dishonoured and made fun of by people, but we, we must still make our stand. By evil report and good report, whatever people say about us, we must continue to be holy and work as God wants us to work and to, to behave and act. By honour and dishonour, by evil report and good report, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live. As chastened, as being corrected by God, changed by God, but not killed as well. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, we may not have got an awful lot, but this church gives everything it's got. Everything we have, and what gives God gives us, we give back, don't we? We're not a rich church. Well, we are. We are rich in heavenly gifts and blessings. You know, but, you know, we'd like to have more to give out to the community. And let's continue to pray that more funding will come in, that the food bank can continue, you know, while this pandemic and all this is going on, that we can be able to serve <coughs> the community around us. Yet me, many me, ours have nothing. We sometimes think we have nothing, but we possess all things. And Paul was continues in that chapter. O oh, Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. We feel for you. We carry the burden for you. We, we love you so much. Our heart is so big for you, you know? And that's how we feel about this community. Our heart is big, you know? We want to do so much more. The next bit of the message is, be not equally yoked. God wants us to be careful who we're hanging about with, who are, what people have an influence on our lives, whether it's a good influence or a bad influence. We need to be careful we mix in with the right people that will build us up and encourage us, not put us down and drag us away with them. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know what a yoke is, tied together. You can, a cow or a bull or whatever they used to use, horses, they'd have a wooden yoke on their necks and they'd have to walk forward together. 
But if you were un, if you were attached to somebody who's an unbeliever, then they can lead you astray, and we need to be careful who we hang around with, so that we are keeping the right kind of company, company that loves and cares for us and wants to lead us forward in the things of God. Mm. For what for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? We are children of the light, not children of the dark, are we? And what agreement has the temple, I'm skipping verses here, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. We need God in us. We need God to walk with him daily. We need to make sure that we are right daily before we step out the front door, that we are walking in Christ. Miracles and signs and wonders cannot happen if we are not walking in the right way. We heard that with the word this morning. God wants holy living and separate living. Yeah, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We don't partake of the things of the world. God says, come out from among them and be separate. Second Corinthians 6, verse 17 to 18. So come out from among them, unbelievers, and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favour. <coughs> and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. God wants to be our father, and he wants to take us in his arms. But he can't take us if we are mixing with the wrong people and the wrong crowds. You know? We need to be walking <coughs> in victory and faith. And we can't be walking in faith and victory if we are filling our minds with things that are not godly. God's calling us to be separate. Come out, he says. First Peter Chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves. In all your conduct, be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage. Because it is written, you shall be holy, set apart, for I am holy. If you address, if you address as father the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in reverent fear of him, and with profound respect for him throughout the time of your stay on earth. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. God wants us to be different. He wants us to be holy, even. As I am holy, he says. And if we call God Father, we must come under his guidance and direction. We must allow him to chastise, is a word we don't use very often, correct us, to prune us, to change us. Last Sunday, Wayne read this psalm, and I'm going to read it again. Psalm 15, he mentioned in his message. And I think this could be a good one for us as a church as well, to try and learn this one. Psalm 15. O Lord, who may lodge as a guest in your tent, who may dwell continually on your holy hill. He who walks with integrity. Now we emphasised the integrity last week, and strength of character, and works righteousness and speaks and holds truth in his heart. This is what God wants us to hold, his word, his truth in our hearts. He does not slander with his tongue. Right. 
Oh, that's right, that's really right. Because, yeah, because <laughs> not stand at this time. I pause then just to think about it. Mm. Nor does evil to his neighbour, nor takes up reproach against his friend. In his eyes, an evil person is despised, but he honours those who fear the Lord and obediently worship him with all inspired reverence and submissive wonder, and keeps his word even to his own disadvantage, and does not change it for, it for his own benefit. He does not put out his money at interest, but by the right, and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. That's it, yeah. You know, I like that psalm that we mm. read out last week. And it stuck with me all week as well. God wants us to walk blamelessly. As we read already, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And what we put in here, 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 what we say, what we hear, what we think. I've said it before, be careful little eyes what you see. see. Be careful little ears what you hear. Be careful, little lips, what you say. There's a saviour up there watching over you in love. Remember all these old uh, songs, but they have a truth in them. We must be careful what we say. This year is still going to be tough. He never promised it was going to be easy, but God wants us to concentrate all our efforts on our callings and gifts this year. Because he is about to pour out of his spirit in a great end time harvest. Mm -hmm. He is asking us, are we going to continue to hide and allow what he has given us to stagnate? You know what it's like in a pool of water and it just stands there and it gets fills up with rubbish and dirt and everything. Unless the rain comes and fills it up with fresh water. We need to be, you know, not stagnant. We need to be moving. We need to be moving, like the waves of the sea or a river that's flowing down from the mountains. We need to keep moving in the spiritual realm, in the things of God. He's asking us, are we going to continue to hide our gifts and allow what he's given us to get stagnant? We can no longer make excuses for not stepping up and taking what he has commissioned mm. us to do. Remember the parable of the talents? We've heard a lot about that. One was given ten, one was given five, one was given one, I think it was. The one who had ten gifts invested wisely. He concentrated, he worked on that, and he ended up with ten more. And the one who had five gifts ended up with five more because he used what he'd been given and kept on using it. And don't be like the foolish one who hid his one gift in the ground and he made some excuses and when he came back, that he hadn't used his gift, that gift was taken away from him. So what I feel strongly about, God has given each one of you gifts. We saw one of them being used this morning, Sally. <laughs> and we need to encourage each other in these things, because God's given each one of you a gift and a ministry for this church. And if you're not going to be used in that, if you're not going to allow God to use you, then let's give an opportunity this morning to share a picture or a word. And sometimes we all can get different things and we, we're afraid to say them, we're afraid to speak up, we're afraid to share what we feel is on, you know, God's heart. Mm -hmm. It was great to hear Wayne coming out in that this morning, because I tell you what, God's going to start using people, and people that we not expect sometimes. Mm -hmm. He's going to use each one of us to bring about the word from God at some point, in different ways different ministries, but if we don't do what we've got, he's going to take that away from us and he'll give it to somebody else. Somebody else, as I started off with this sermon, are we trustworthy enough? Can God trust us with what he's given us? Because he is going to move, he is going to bring a revival, he is going to pour out of his spirit, but he's looking to see whether we are faithful with what we little we've got. We may not think we've got much, but use what you've got. Mm. Invest it wisely. You know, we need to seek God mm. daily 
to read the scriptures daily, I set the challenge. Some people have taken up the challenge and going through the Bible in a year. Whatever God has asked you to do, take up the challenge. Count the cost. You know? Another one has said, counting the cost of following Jesus, it's not going to be easy. You can tell, call, it concerns sacrifice. It concerns going without. But the greater the sacrifice, the greater the blessing. The more we give up for God, the more God will bless us with. Mm. I know I've been using a lot of different scriptures today, but uh, i got two more scriptures that those who've done BLC as well, we should know this one of them off by heart. <laughs> and the other thing is, this is what God wants to do this year. It's going to be a year of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Now there will be signs in the heaven, signs on the earth, and God will use us to bring about miracles and signs and wonders too. Amen. So Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, Jesus came and said to them, Should do it off by heart. Yeah, brand new sign. Yeah. <laughs> All power is given unto me. I do it to the different version of that. <laughs> Jesus came up and said to them, All power, all absolute rule in heaven mm. and earth has been given to me. But that's been given to you. Mm. Not just to Jesus. He's given that power and authority to you. Go. Therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me and obey my words. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, mm. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I know somebody said to me they'd like to be baptized this year, so we'll have to sort something out soon, and maybe others may want to. Teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, <coughs> remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstances, on every occasion, even to the end of the age. So God wants us to step out, step forward, take up the challenge. He wants us to become more trustworthy. He wants us to obey him this year. And not say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week. No, do it today. Okay. Mark 16, verse 15 to 18. I have a lot of opposition about this in one church. I actually left because, uh, you know, they wouldn't allow me to do any of the things that... <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, this is the scripture, Mark 16, verse 15 to 18. Yes. Okay. You know, Mark, so. oh, <laughs> okay. I'm getting cold after this. I have to he who has, has believed in me and is being baptized will be saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment. But he who has not believed,